Hey everyone and welcome to another video. So uh, today we're going to talk about an engine that I'm trying to make, a 2D game engine in OpenGL and C++. Uh, I'm actually going to make videos about the game engine uh, in the future. I have plans about that. But today I want to talk about this game engine that I'm currently working on. Before I go forward though, I'm actually going to run this engine so that you can see what is even going on. Like you can see, like if I just move this, so you can see that we have mouse coordinates. You can see the mouse is working just fine. Uh, we even have logging. And if I go into here and press escape, um, let me full screen this. You can see that we have keyboard input working. And this is all inside of this sandbox example.cpp. Um, it took me quite a long amount of time, quite a good amount of time to get all of this working. You can see that the sandbox example is just 43 lines of code, but that's obviously due to abstracting a lot of this. Uh, it, it used to be about uh, 120, I guess 120 lines after abstracting, you know, um, the basic stuff, like for example, the buffers, the shaders, you know, the window, all of that. So we're going to talk about the structure in just a bit, but we need to talk about why I am actually making this game engine is because I wanted to make this game engine so that I can, you know, improve, um, you know, I could understand how game engines actually work. Because if you straight up use, um, you know, game engines like Unity, Unreal, something like that, you wouldn't really understand how they work. You wouldn't really know what sandbox is. You wouldn't really know how shaders work in a game engine. You know, a lot of stuff is important to understand. Now, yes, it's not required, but it's good if you understand it. Now, obviously, I'm not really going to attempt uh, to make 3D rendering, uh, probably support 3D rendering in this engine. And that's because I don't have enough knowledge to actually uh, do something like that but a 2d game engine is just fine uh, now i've shown you the actual result but the other one i want to show you is the update from 31st of may uh, if i actually go ahead and play this again you can see that we have this uh, little texture with that cat uh, spinning around and we also have i'm gooey uh, now those are not removed yet i i basically removed them because i'm going to make and render 2d i'm actually making that if i uh, going to here you can see this is what I have it's not perfect like you can see uh, I'm using some uh, hard coded values I'm actually going to improve this a little bit uh, we need to make sure that uh, you know it scales perfectly well for all coordinates and we also need to support textured quads you know rotated quads and all of that stuff um, yeah and we have input as well like uh, like as you can see right here and logging system does work i'm using spd log uh, because it works pretty well for me and you can also see the time and all of that so everything is fine and we also have opengl uh, debugging like if i open up debug dodge you know this is uh, not really like i made this from scratch this is copied from learnopengl.com i will actually give credit uh, to op learnopengl.com because this is again not my code I made it so that it actually works with my logging system and I modified some stuff uh, so that it works um, in this engine and uh, let's talk about the directory structure it's quite interesting um, because uh, look at the engine we have the source we have source inside of the engine and this includes the include directory which has all of the dot h or the dot header files and then we have inside of the source directory we have all of the cpp files which is i mean it's fine you don't really have to be like perfect with your design now obviously this engine is nowhere perfect or nowhere near to even make a simple uh, game so it's far from perfect again i'm using opengl um so yeah it's going to take a lot of time uh, to get something at least good onto the screen like movement and all of that uh, but you know, it's fine for, for now and Yeah, so look at that. We have the core and we have the arm GUI, which uh, is not really You know, we don't really have uh, much there. We have input uh, For now, we only have keyboard and mouse input, which is fine again We don't really want to like go crazy with the input um, Probably in the future if I want to I could actually support uh, joysticks 
but for now i don't really think it's necessary and we have the renderer so the renderer uh, actually has buffer shader texture vertex array it's pretty small again the engine is not really that big um, and then if i go into the sandbox so what i've done is normally you would have your engine built as a static library instead of an executable because you wouldn't really have to do you couldn't really do anything with executing the engine obviously all of the rendering code is inside of the sandbox so if i just open up the sandbox we have the build directory i'm using premake we only have uh, one premake for now which is again fine again i don't really want to make this engine like it's a professional one uh, and uh, the main function is actually not handled by engine which is quite interesting uh, because i don't want like it's not really like you you shouldn't do this inside of the engine it's just me having all of this inside of the sandbox uh if you want to publish this game engine well you would obviously publish the engine source code as well as the static library and then use it inside of the sandbox uh, but it's fine again and looking at the sandbox app.cpp this is what uh, runs the actual sandbox and the engine all of that stuff is built using this premake phi.lua you can see this is what we have i gotta modify this uh, because we don't have some files and it could lead to some issues uh, but again uh, is that so if i go into that cpp you can see that we have the sandbox uh, it inherits from the application so the game engine name is freeze uh, basically inside of the freeze namespace you have the application class so every single file that you create inside of your game engine or inside of this game engine it should be wrapped inside of the freeze namespace and basically what happens is that if i open up the application uh, the application is pretty simple we have on net on event on update and then we have this uh, simple set engine viewport and then we have a virtual destructor because it's going to get um, called or basically inherited and you can see that we uh, you know initialize the application so if you create another sandbox for example and inherits from the application you should construct the application inside of here and uh, you can see that i'm calling sandbox app instead of the constructor and the application takes in the width height as well as the title uh, if i run that you can see it's 800 into 600 if i would like to change the width 720p1 and if i actually go ahead and do make j10 all right now if i run this you can see that the resolution has been changed and um you can see that we can even able to full screen this all right uh, we're going to keep it 800 into 600 it's fine and yeah so and what we do in the main function is create the sandbox app as an heap allocator because again this is our entire uh, sandbox so we don't want to uh, create it on the stack and then we basically run the on update now uh, this should be called run I don't know why I named it on update but basically it should be called the run function so maybe I'll make a simple to do so yeah that's uh, something that I should do after this video and then at the end we delete the sandbox and I'll uh, keep that as well all right so that's the sandbox app now what happens well we have sandbox example.cpp so what happens here is that um, we have on init on input on update and the on update calls the renderer 2d's uh, render quad like as you can see we shouldn't really do this instead we should call the render renders uh, render 2d's update function inside of the engine so we initialize the render 2d uh, inside of the engine and whenever it needs to be destroyed we need to destroy it and obviously same thing goes with the update function as well so that's important and uh, yeah and looking at the on init basically what i do here is i simply do a draw quad you can see that i'm passing in a simple vec3 and i'm passing in the shaders now you might see that this is a bit weird like you wouldn't pass uh, parts like this but basically what i'm doing is that when i compile the program you know if i just basically do a premake 
5g make what happens is that uh, i generate this root directory dot h inside of the core so if i go into include core you can see this is where i generate it so that uh, instead of having to you know specifically add those dot dot dots and all of that it becomes quite messy so i basically add this uh, so that now we can instead of adding this dot dot slash all of that you can simply access shader slash whatever the file name you want now i should make a function out of it because this uh, this doesn't really look good um and yeah now looking at some other stuff we have window.cpp now i want to talk about the layer system because looking at the application.cpp um you can see that we have m sandbox on in it uh, which should be uh, yeah we should be called right here uh, again i don't really know why i'm uh, making those small mistakes but anyways as you can see we should specifically call m sandbox now this shouldn't really do and we shouldn't really do like this uh, because if you look at application.h we are importing sandbox example.h instead of that uh, we could do something like a layer system in which we add our sandbox example to a layer and then instead of calling the m sandbox we can actually call the layer so uh, for init functions in the applications on init function we can uh, basically loop over all of the existing layers and call the on init function and same goes with the on update and if there is an on event in the future that's the same thing so that's another thing that i should work on today if i have time uh, and also i forgot uh, to talk about the logging system like if i go into um what is this code.h all right so this is what we have right now you can see that depending on release or uh, debug we have some uh, macros now i don't really use macros that much but for something like a logging system this is perfectly fine uh, you can see that if I am in release, then I basically do the uh, all of the logging functions. But instead of calling them, I put it inside of uh, hashtag if zero. Basically, this will not be called if I am in something like uh, release mode so that I don't have logs running over. Now, having logs in development is absolutely terrible because you don't want to slow down your engine. But for something like debugging purposes, it's completely fine. And also this, I forgot to talk about the Linux and Windows thing. This currently works only for Linux. I know you could make this work for Windows, but uh, you can see that we have this assert, which uh, is, only going to work on linux for now i have some other stuff as well that only work for linux and some dependencies that i should fix like for example the way i structure my external dependencies is quite terrible you can see i put all of these inside of here uh, you know instead of basically cloning it from online and putting it in the local folder i should do uh, sub modules because when the user clones it they could obviously do a recursive and uh, clone all of the submodules. Uh, that could make things a bit uh, better because right now, if I actually clone this, the I am GUI folder is empty and I'm not really sure why. Um, so I got to do that as well. Again, there are a lot of issues with this engine. It's nowhere perfect. Again, as I've told you, there is no way you can make it, make a game with this. This is just impossible. Uh, again, I have a lot of ideas. We don't really have an event system, a camera uh, right now. And if I'm talking about physics, probably for the future, then I think it's better to not include physics right now because we don't really have anything to even like draw the physics bodies. So we should work on the renderer first and then have some kind of event system, uh, probably, um, you know, event system and then camera system get all of that basics working and then we could expand on audio physics and something like that and talking about the sdl uh, game we shouldn't really talk too much about it because it's absolutely a terrible game it's not it shouldn't be even called a game but you know i just attempted to make something uh, i could have done it probably in probably two weeks but i wasted a lot of time because i thought of improving um 
but basically adding more features all right so that's pretty much it uh, that's all i want to talk about in this video i know this video is doesn't really provide a lot of information about the future uh, i may not be sure about the future about uh, you know the engine future but right now if you want to support the engines completely free you can clone this it works on linux perfectly fine you need to make sure that you have OpenGL. Um, you know, make sure you got that glue GL of W installed. Um, and once you got that, I guess the premake should take care of the other dependencies like the SPD log, I'm GUI, and the other stuff. So yeah, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Uh, visit this um, GitHub repository. Make sure you give it a star so that I can continue this project. And so yeah, that's pretty much it and I will see you in the next video.